Okay, now we'll just move it to Halliday's description of the same process because he simplifies it down again. And he simplifies it by relying on his pattern of his description. Right, uh, he draws the circle. And he says the time on it thing. The circle, there is white paper. The white paper is to be considered to be infinite in all directions. And the circle is meant to be considered to be a sphere. It's a drawing, but it's a sphere. And you can imagine it like that. You can keep it as white paper as long as you imagine that this is infinite power. Because it's representing infinite power. And the line is representing a formed line within itself. In creating that circle, it has created not a two, um, it's created a one, a, a non-duality. It's created something inside of itself, but the white paper goes right the way through it, so it isn't separated. It appears to be separated, but it actually isn't separated. And it's created a within and a without. And um, it's created a passage across between the external and the internal. <coughs> it's created a form, a shape. Now, quite simply, uh, what Halliday says early on in the tape about the bardo is that the bardo is this. It's literally that. It's the distance. It's the. It's that band, the firmament, the forming between the inside life and the outside of life. So that this is the Godhead, if you like, the vast unknowable sea of energy, the bliss or the pure light, which the Tibetans call the ground luminosity of pure consciousness. But that is going right through this being too. So that's inside here. But inside it experiences it differently. It experiences this and all the forms inside it. It, it. it actually experiences the wave motions which are creating and affecting this. So, that's his description, that's his diagram. I would sort of extend it a bit more because he actually says what a bardo is, is that line, and you can say to yourself, how big is the bardo? It depends on the thickness of your pencil. How are you thick are you going to draw it? Because it is a barrier, but it is a barrier which has been created, not instantly like I've done, it's a barrier which has been created out of tension. <coughs> it's a tension band which has been started by a push coming out of the infinite and coming in to the zone to create a zone. And it comes in from that way, so all the way through to here there is increasing tension. Now this is me saying this, he alludes to it but he doesn't actually say it, but I'm putting it back into other diagrams he's drawing in other places. So this is the tension coming in, if you like, it's the, the force coming into that field and creating a central turbulated, a ball, which is being thrown by the infinite. It's creating that selfhood inside there, or that world, or that universe, or that being, and it's doing it by creating an increasing band of tension. And it's pushing inwards. Now you can see this as a form of gravity. Like when Einstein says that space is curved, and as you get closer to the world, you get less and less space. It gets more and more dense until you actually, the planet itself is condensed space. So he's talking about exactly the same process. So as you get closer and closer to that being, you start to get atmosphere. You start to get interference. You start to get pull. And if you like, it becomes more interesting. It becomes more intense as you get closer to that. And inside there, you've got the resistance of this thing which is being squeezed at a certain point. It starts to hit back. So it starts to spin back in the equal and opposite direction and it creates a vortex inside itself. So that inside of that, we then get a tension band here, which is an integument which becomes a skin surface, if you like in which this being can feel itself to be individually not out there and it has now got a boundary when it can says, well this is me and out there is not me. And similarly the 
the cosmos can say the same thing about this, it has an individual inside of itself, or a universe inside of itself. Because inside of that, all of those things, those turbulences, will create further turbulences. And those further turbulences will have inside them further turbulences. So you get worlds within worlds, or wheels within wheels, as Ezekiel said. And inside of one of those, it's got another one inside of those. Inside of those. I'll draw those later. So then the process is going in. So, if you're saying, where does the bottom start? If you say this is the pure light right out here, before the, li the lines have even started, if you, if you like, as you get more and more involved in this, or closer and closer to its being, you start to get formal shapes. You start to feel the pull of existence. So when they're talking about the different, you know, the different levels of the bardo, <coughs> they're talking about the, the different states, but they're talking about the feeling band, the action band around this form. So you could then say, well, okay, if I draw a bigger line here, outside of which there's very, very, very little influence of that circle, you get like a big eyeball, where it's very, very blackened and uh, intense in here, and as you move further away, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until you're back to the pure light. So you could then say that any being experiencing itself by focusing at different levels will experience itself as either a very gentle essence, a very gentle feeling state, a, my, a very polite little ripple moving into a stronger and stronger and more formed and more shaped until it becomes intensely shaped and then hammered and squeezed inside of itself until it becomes a total rock of um, consolidation in the middle, a vast black hole in the middle of, co of the cosmos, if you like. So you would then say, well, the bardo state is then, it's that thick. There's the Vardo, it's very thick and it starts off with almost pure light and it comes down through forms which are dreamlike and then it gets down into almost becoming and here is real life. So here's samsara, there's the real world, the wheel of blood or the wheel of, of, of change, the wheel of life if you like here. This is the thing, the nitty gritty that we experience and these are formal stages of stronger and stronger formal intensity. And right out here is very delicate and moving in with this dirt. So there's the pure light, there's the different bardos would be in terms of concentric circles. As you're getting in closer and closer to that, you're getting in to more and more levels. So you could put the, the chi eye here, so the chi eye, and then that's the chi eye bardo, with its its dead states and etc. and its pure light, and then this one would be the Chongyit. Sorry. And inside here would be the Siddhpath. The Siddhpath. Which are the ones that we talked about here in the, just the straight line. So the, the diagram I had here. Oops. Me. The diagram I've got here of the, of the Chikai and the Tonyad and the Sinpan model, if you like, if we curve these lines, all we've done is we've taken a cross section like that and we've drawn it here. And there's the force of karma pushing in to samsara, to rebirth in one of these forms inside this world here. And so you're feeling the rush, the push, if you like, just as the gravity gets more intense as you approach the world or the universe or whatever, so the pull into existence gets more intense. So if you can recognize yourself, if you can feel yourself and base yourself further away from that, you have the transcendence, the distance, if you like, to be able to reflect upon the levels of life which are going on inside there. So Eugene is limited. Is, is saying it, his original thing is to just sort of say, well, there's the skin surface that is being created, and if we call this a human being, these are the atoms of construction inside of him. That's the skin surface he draws around him. So all he's done is push it, so that it becomes instead of that, it pushes a head shape and arms and legs and you can tell I went to art school, couldn't you? <laughs> anyway, you see, so you get the human being. It's just that thing having grown. Pseudopodia, literally, it's the same skin surface which has developed itself into a being. 